ora. Welcome to this message from Hope Chapel Hamilton. We hope that this message inspires you and we pray that it brings you encouragement wherever you are in life. Awesome. Thank you, Courtney. Hey, welcome to the nine o'clock. It's cool to have you with us. And uh, we're in this brand new series. You might be wondering what's going on. Yes, there's something slightly different going on on stage here. We've got a a little interview happening soon. But um, before we get started, I um, just want to open up and talk a little bit about this series. Maybe can I have the pulpit for just a few moments? That would be awesome. Somebody, thanks, Graham. Uh, Because we're in this new series and... uh, We've got a graphic that's going to go up on the screen there behind me. It probably already is. This, uh, this series is called Kōrero Speak. And uh, we're so excited to be announcing this new series. We're going to be spending a month or so looking at this series and what God uh, is speaking to us as a church through this awesome word that He's given us. So I want to start with the passage in the Bible from Isaiah 12, verse 4. It says this, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim His name. Make known among the nations what He has done and proclaim that His name is exalted. Church, we all have a story, right? We all have a story. Some of our stories are a little bit more colourful than others and some of our stories are uh, best left quiet sometimes. Some of them might be pretty bad, uh, but, but we all have a story. And every single one of our stories is unique in its own right. But what is interesting about our stories is that they're also uh, very much the same. No matter what walk of life we come from, no matter what background, no matter what history, no matter what family, all of that sort of situation, we all at some point have met Jesus and He's entered our world and by the grace of Jesus is the same for the person next to us and around us and behind us and everywhere else. Jesus is the same Jesus. He died for us and rose to life for us to give us a hope and a future. His grace is the same for every one of us. Also, we all have a voice. Every single one of us has a voice of some sort. And just like this passage in Isaiah says, we are to proclaim the name of the Lord. We have to use our voice. We have to speak so that people can hear us. We are to speak. Now, the thing is though, and you'll get this with the series, is that we're not to speak necessarily about theology or religion or rules and regulations. We're to kororo from our story. We're to speak from our story. Every one of us has a story that we can stand on as a platform to speak from. And I love this graphic that Hamish has put together because it's made up of so many different colours and patterns and shapes And that's pretty much like our life, right? We're all so different from one another. We've all got different patterns and shapes and colours and backgrounds and history. Some are brighter and some are dull and some are just all kind of mixed up together. But we all have a story and it makes a beautiful pattern and picture when it comes together. So this series we're launching today is about all of us being encouraged that we have a story and that we have a voice and that we're to kororo or speak to proclaim the name of the Lord. Is that all right? So today, we're going to start off every week, we're going to have a bit of an interview. We're going to hear from someone about their story. And to kick things off today, we're we're going to hear from Hannah and Ian. So why don't you guys come and come up, come and grab a seat, grab a microphone. There's one either side here. Now, I introduced them as Hannah and Ian because I don't actually know how to pronounce their surname. Uh, so maybe we, we could start off by that, right? So tell us, what, tell us your surname. Spanik. Spanik. Spanik, okay. Because in the office, everyone's pretty much got a different interpretation of your name. Spanaki and oh, all sorts of other things that we've thrown. Spanhake, Spanhake. Spanhake. Yeah, that, pretty much. And then some other ones too that we won't go into. But anyway... <laughs> So you guys uh, have been a part of the church for a little while now, and it's so great to have you with us. We, some of you will recognise Hannah from Church News. Sometimes she fronts that and, and other things. But uh, an awesome couple. They're a part of our church here at Hope Chapel in Hamilton. And uh, I just want to ask them a few questions start, to start off with, because you may know a little bit about them. You may have heard a little bit about their story, or you may not, and just seen her on Church News. And how many of us know there's a whole lot more to somebody than what they present on a TV screen? And so... Uh, first of all, I guess the first question for you, Hannah, is why don't you tell us a little bit about what your life was like before you met Jesus? 
Um, I actually initially met Jesus when I was four years old. Um, I grew up in an amazing Christian family, um, and I had this um, little Bible, <laughs> a little children's Bible, and I was reading through my child's Bible, and I just thought, this guy's really cool, Jesus. I just want him to be my best friend, and I suppose that was initially how I met Jesus. But later on in my life, I went through a number of different health difficulties, um, I was diagnosed with colitis, ulcerative colitis, when I was about 12, and then when I was 21, I got arthritis, and then a year later, I got fibromyalgia, and then a year later after that, I found out that I had a heart condition. And in amongst all of that, um, I was lying in a hospital bed uh, on one of my many visits, and I had already in my I was in my Christian walk prior to that, seeing God do some amazing things, heal so many people. Um, and I think in that moment, I was like, why won't you do this for me? And I wanted it in my timing. <laughs> and in that moment, I just said, I don't want to talk to you anymore. And that was, I suppose, when I kind of walked away. <laughs> so, so what was life like for you after you walked away? Um, horrible. <laughs> I felt really lonely. Um, Jesus had always been my best friend and my rock. And I, I suppose in, in my worldly perspective felt that I had been abandoned, which totally wasn't the case. <laughs> um, yeah, but in amongst all of that bad time, um, a lovely man came into my life and yeah. So, just... so before you get into that, I know yeah. you want to get there. <laughs> tell, first of all, tell us how you, you found Jesus again. Um, okay, so after I found out that I had a heart condition, um, I was lying in our bed going... <laughs> this is so not fair, like yet another thing is wrong with my body. Like I just don't understand why this is happening to me. Um, and so in that moment, for the first time in years, I just yelled at God and I was like, I don't understand why this is happening. I've seen you do amazing things and I cannot deny that you exist. And in that moment, I had all these visions of what God had done in my life. And even when I was not necessarily speaking to him. I wasn't on speaking terms. He showed me when he was there. Awesome. And so I just couldn't deny the fact that he'd been there through the whole time. So I said to him, okay, I'll make a deal with you. If, if you send me the right person, so you need to find someone who's going to come and collect me, basically, and I don't want to go back to my old church, and it needs to be a church where we're going to belong. Um, and so I loved Latin dancing, and so I went out dancing one night, um, and this girl walked up to me, and I was sitting down at a bar stool, and she's like, oh, why aren't you dancing? And I was like, oh, I've got arthritis, so I'm just taking a break. And she boldly said to me, did you know Jesus could heal you? And I was like, holy moly, like, you're the person. You are the person that I asked God to send me. Um, and so that weekend, we sat down, and I told her my story and what had kind of led up to that. And in this cafe, I felt Holy Spirit rushing my body, and I was like, I just need to go back to church. Like, are you going to church tonight? Because I'm going, and so I want you to come with me. And so I went to her church, which was C3 Howick. Um, and then that night, everything that Pastor Wayne said to me, Pastor Wayne's like, awesome. If you haven't been to C3 Howick, you need to go check it out. Um, He's coming to speak later in the year. Oh, yes. Okay. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, everything that I, I felt like he'd been sitting underneath the coffee table while we were talking um, earlier that day. And everything that he said was just straight to my heart. Um, and before he'd even finished the sermon and called people to come to the altar, I just ran up the front and was just like, I just need to surrender my life to you again, Jesus. And in that moment, um, Pastor Wayne prayed for me and I got drastically healed. I went from 30 pills a day to none. Wow. Yeah. Wow, amazing. Come on, let's give Jesus a hand. So, Ian, you've been sitting there quietly with the microphone. and So let's ask you a question. Can you... Uh, can you give me a rundown on what your life was like before you met Hannah? Before I met Hannah was, yeah, just dreadful, like falling apart, basically. Um, I was running a company up in Whangarei for quite a few years um, with my partner at the time. Um, we split up and I basically moved to Auckland quite soon after with a single bag of clothes to my name and sleeping on a, a, a friend's uh, dining room floor for about three months. Um, so I was in a pretty bad place at the time. Uh, but at that time, I started almost, in a, and I, became, I was in a place of searching. I was really looking for truth, um, not particularly in the right places, but I was, you know, I was an atheist. I'd never come from a, um, 
Christian background or my family had never been to church or anything like that. Um, but I was looking at, you know, conspiracy theory documentaries and <laughs> the Zeitgeist documentary and all that stuff, trying to find truth and things, but I just I couldn't find it. Um, and, yeah, eventually met Hannah and then... So how did you guys meet? Um, we actually <laughs> met online, which is a bit <laughs> weird. Um, it's common these days, like fairly common though. Yeah, um, I'd been single for about eight or nine months, and my mate, my flatmate, was basically at the time. I think he was trying to push me out of the house or something, but he was like, "You got to get back on the on the horse." And so signed me up to this um, online dating app, and I was not that keen on it or anything. Um, but came across Hannah's profile, and I just sent her, a, you know, a nice message, <laughs> and um, we ended up going for coffee and yeah. sort of. So you swipe right, is that what it is? Swipe right? Oh, Not that I know how to do it. This is well <laughs> before Tinder. Well <laughs> before those things came into play. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So, so Hannah, why don't you tell us a little bit, obviously you were healed miraculously, but how did life change for you from that moment on? Um, to kind of give you some perspective maybe, um, so I had tried numerous times to come off my medication. Um, so I'd... Um, I suppose in the course of being really unwell, I'd put on quite a lot of weight just because I physically couldn't actually walk. Um, so I, I could walk. <laughs> so that in itself was amazing. Um, I, I was really trying to, I suppose, heal myself. Um, I'd gone through quite a drastic um, diet overhaul. I was trying to do exercise, like the exercise that I could do and stuff. Um, my medication meant that sometimes I wouldn't wake up till 11 a.m. Like Ian would have to physically shake me to wake me up because this medication would just knock me out. Um, yeah, so I was totally liberated from, um, I suppose, like toxic chemicals in my body <laughs> um, to actually be able to be free. And I suppose as well, um, the emotional freedom that came from that and the sense of freedom and, and joy that, um, yeah... I suppose just now just flows out of me just because it's from him. Yeah. yeah fantastic. Yeah. Just so so uh, <laughs> so you went to church on your own and got saved. Ian, you weren't part of that process. So yeah. tell me how that was for you and what happens following. Uh, it was pretty dramatic to say the least. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hannah had just been healed at church and she actually managed to pull me along a couple of times, um, which is a completely new experience for me. Uh, I, I appreciated it. I, I respected what you know the church was about and the people there, but I never felt ever connected with it. Um, so I kind of that I no longer went to those services. But um, I remember Hannah, I think, was out, and I was home alone one night, and I was laying on my bed, and I was just so frustrated because I'd been suffering from depression for about uh, 20 years, um, and I don't know if anyone understands hear what that's like or, or know someone, but it's, it's a daily struggle um, that I was dealing with. And I was just on the end of my rope, what I felt like, and I was on my bed and I just cried out to God one night. I've never spoken to God in my life and I just said, if you're real, help me. Um, I need to get through this and I need you to help me, basically. And I didn't ever expect any response or anything, you know, it was just a cry of frustration. And then probably about a, about a week later, um, it was the middle of the night, it was 4am, and I was instantly awake one night, just completely alert, and it was really weird, and I just started getting these thoughts, um, really positive thoughts, so like you are loved, you are kind, you are generous, mm. you are bold, you are wise, all of these really great positive affirmations. As a, as a depressed person, is completely just yeah. bizarre, you just never get that. And... Um, I was like, this is really weird, but I'm enjoying it, so I'll go along with the ride. <laughs> and, um, and then after that, he said, um, take these words as seeds and plant them within yourself um, wow. so that they will grow and flourish. And at that point, I was like, okay, this is not me. This is something else that's happening here. Um, uh, and at that point, I was just wondering what, what the heck's going on. And then he said, um, I have infinite and unconditional love for you. Uh, at a level that no one on earth can match. Wow. And at that point, um, I just felt like I've heard from other people what it's like. It's like, a, it's like a spiritual hug. It's like a warm blanket that just comes around you of just pure love and it just blew me away. 
Uh, and shortly after that, he said, um, I can cure any illness. Uh, I have infinite power, and I can cure any illness with a simple touch. And at that point, I felt what felt like a physical hand touch the back of my head, and just, it was a weird sensation, but it was like the, the, the depression that I'd had, that I'd dealt with every single day for 20 years, that it affected every element of my life, just lifted off me straight away. Wow. It was Amazing. insane. So I guess you said yes to Jesus at some point yeah. after uh, eventually, that. Eventually, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Funnily enough, Ian said to me the next day, like, because it's... Uh, he woke up the next day and told me what had happened. And part of my testimony, which is it's a whole other kettle of fish, was that God gave me seeds when I was going through a very similar situation with depression and stuff. Um, and so I'd been praying for God to give Ian seeds. Wow. And so, yeah, that was an amazing time for both of us because we both knew that God had heard us mm. and that would be like a really big encouragement that we would give you all is that we know that God hears you. Mm, yeah. Fantastic. So you see, have you seen your story, Hannah, uh, have a positive impact on other people around you? Um, I, I would totally say yes. I think like the most simple example was like when I got healed, Ian's full-blown atheist, like researching Illuminati and all this sort of <laughs> stuff. And for me to then walk home and say to him, I'm completely free of all my medication, um, like that in itself was such a huge testimony to him because he's like, what the heck? Um, and it just didn't make any earthly sense. So I think from that perspective, like even the impact that it had on Ian and then, you know, if, if, if everything had happened in the timing that I wanted it to happen, then he wouldn't have been witness to that. So like God's timing is so, so incredible. Um, but then outside of that, I mean, um, this, hopefully this story even just encourages you guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Hey, Ian, so as we head into this series called Korero Speak, what encouragement can you give us about speaking from a personal experience of God? From what I've learned from my experience is that God does hear us. Mm. Absolutely. Um, He has a tremendous love for us that we can't even fathom. Um, And just the grace that he has as well. Like, you know, I was never deserving of what happened to me, not even close, but he he chose to do what he did. Mm. Um, you know, that song we were singing before, um, he is the one who never leaves one behind. It's so true. Like, mm. he came back and did that for me when I did not deserve it. And he hears us, absolutely. So mm. that would be my encouragement. Yeah. Absolutely. Great. Hannah, what, anything you want to add to that? Oh, I would just echo the same thing, to be honest. Like, if if Jesus died on the cross and he happened to just miss you, like, he would just come back and he would do the whole thing over again because he just loves every single one of us so much. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that, you know, Ian's story is pretty incredible um, in terms of the only words he ever spoke to God was... Like, if you're there, just please come and help me. And that, that enough was an invitation enough for God then to rush in and display his love and his glory to, to Ian. Um, yeah, and, and, he's, and to others. Yeah, yeah and he's, he's totally got that exact same invitation for every single one of you. Yeah. Mm, fantastic. Why don't we give these guys a round of applause? Awesome job. You guys can stay there for a moment if you want. That's fine. Just hang up here with me for a bit. <laughs> So, you know what, I, I was just listening to their story, it's so crazy out there story, and people would potentially might be sceptical or whatever, but you know the most amazing thing about our story is that no one can actually argue with it, because it happened to us, and if I told somebody a story about this person I knew that woke up in the middle of the night and was healed from depression, or, and this other person that went from 30 pills to none, They could argue with that and say, well, where'd you hear that? It's not that true. How could that possibly happen? But these guys experienced it and lived it and you can't take that story away. And, uh, you know, that's the power of personal evangelism. And this is what the series is all about, is that we all have a story. It may not be exactly like, or most likely won't be exactly like Hannah and Ian's, but uh, we all have a story and no one can argue that story. And people want to know your history and your background and, and they're willing to listen to that story. And, uh, and I guess my heart for this series is that we begin to realise that we have a place to speak from. 
and, and we don't have to understand everything. We don't have to have all the head knowledge, know all the Bible scriptures to quote at people about why God's real. We just have to begin to speak or cut it all from our story. And people will listen to that. There's a passage of scripture that we all know about and we've talked about before in Matthew 28, where Jesus really is one of his last commands to us was, uh, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have given you all authority on heaven and on earth. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all commands I have given you and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And we read this and we think, oh, that's about evangelism or that's for the evangelists or the pastors or the church leaders to go and start baptizing people. But this is actually a command that Jesus gave to every single one of us. As soon as we become a Christ follower, this scripture or command uh, belongs with us. We have to take ownership of it. And the beautiful thing is that we just have to start telling our story, talking about what God has done. I once was like this and now I'm like this. So uh, we give praise to Jesus. And yeah. that's really all we have to do. But it is our responsibility to just begin to speak from our story. You know, we don't have to have a microphone or a pulpit to reach people. Your life actually has more influence than you realise. There's people in your world that are lost and hurting and broken and dying and need help and you have the answer. You have hope inside of you. And I could never reach them uh, with this microphone, but it's up to you to reach them with your life. And that's my encouragement. And you know, people aren't interested in religion. In this day and age, people are not really interested in religion at all, but they do wanna hear your story. They do wanna hear it. And yet so many of us stay quiet and we keep inside what Jesus has done in our life. Uh, Colossians 4, 5 says this, be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversations be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer to everyone. Last week we talked about salt and its influence and salt and light. And here we're being told to let our conversations be seasoned with salt, to have influence into people's lives. Be wise and take every opportunity we can. Church, it's time that we begin to speak again. We need to get our voice back as individuals and as a church, and we need to make the most of every opportunity that we have. It's really a simple process. You just, if you want a formula or a step-by-step -step thing of how to win someone to Jesus, I, I can give you one right here, okay? It's pretty simple though, so get ready. Uh, you might wanna write it down, I, I don't know, but it's, it's just this, tell your story, and invite them to church. Yeah. Tell your story and invite them to church. This, this right here is where people can hear the gospel message. This is where uh, they have an opportunity to, to respond to Jesus, like Hannah did. She came running down the front and gave her life to Jesus again. This is where God softens people's hearts and ministers to people in this kind of atmosphere, in this kind of environment. It's not up to you to do that and take it all the way. Sometimes we can and that's fantastic, but it's a simple thing. Don't write yourself off and say, I, I couldn't lead someone to Jesus. Just tell your story and invite them to church. And most people will come to church if they're asked, by the way. It's surprising how open people are about that kind of thing. If you have a relationship with somebody, then they will listen to you and, and would wanna come to church. Maybe not so much if you just walked up to a random person on the street and said, hey, come to church. But if you have relationship with them, you know that most visitors into church life come on the arm of somebody else. Yeah, yeah. Most people turn up with somebody else. And we see it here. The majority of visitors that we get is because someone invited them or they brought them along to church. And uh, I was really impacted by a story of Carl Lentz, who's the pastor of C3 New York City. And uh, they went over and planted this church in the middle of New York and they didn't have anybody, they didn't have any uh, programs or systems or anything. And so he just started inviting people. Everywhere he went, he had a little card made up and he just started inviting. We're starting this church, you've got to come. To people at the gas station, at the supermarket, to his neighbours, to everybody he could come across, he invited to church. And the crazy thing was people started turning up. Uh, not every single person he invited, but more and more people started coming. And the cool thing is that it was so ingrained in the culture of the church because they all came on the power of an invite that they started inviting people. And, he's, and the church now is thousands and thousands of people and multiple services across a, a weekend 
And yet the core foundation of the church is keep inviting people. And so everybody is out all over New York City inviting people to come to church. And people are getting saved every weekend because they're brought along by somebody else. And so I, I wanna re- revisit this power of an invite again. And, and sometimes we can enjoy what we have here at church and think, man, uh, this is amazing, but people wouldn't want that. And, and yet when we realise that most people are searching, just like Ian was searching, and we don't know what's going on in people's lives around us, and they're searching and looking for hope. And you, you must remember the time before you had this hope inside you. And we have the answer here. Tell people your story and invite them to church. Here's a little practical tip that I, I found useful. You just pretend like people are already Christians when you're talking to them. So you don't, because it's kind of, you feel a bit uncertain. Oh, how do I do that? Or how do I broach this topic? But if someone said to you next week, uh, Monday or Tuesday, oh, how was your weekend? And you're like, oh, good. Yeah, yeah good. But, but why not say, hey, yeah, it was good. Man, I, we had a great time at church on Sunday. You wouldn't believe it. We had this little interview and these, this young couple got up on stage and talked about how God healed them. And, and they were on 30 pills a day and went down to none overnight. And, and he was depressed for 20 years and God healed him in the middle of the night and he hasn't been depressed since. And you just tell them like they'd want to know that. And, and surprise, surprise, most of the time, people would listen to that sort of a thing and would want to hear what you have to say. So just pretend like they're already saved and start telling them about what God is doing in your life. It's amazing how much confidence that can give us. Now, I understand for some of you, your story might be painful and you might be right in the middle of a process of a story right now. And uh, that's okay. It can be hard sometimes to face that and look at that, but the grace of God is sufficient for you. His strength is there for you. And my encouragement is that every single one of us through this series needs to begin to look at our story again and then begin to have the confidence to speak from that, even if it's still a work in progress, even if we don't have it all together, and even if we're still making mistakes on a daily basis and life still seems a bit of a shambles, the difference between your life and somebody else is that you do have Jesus in your world and he's all the hope that we could ever need and he's the one that died for you and raised to life for you to save you and give you a hope and a future and a destiny and so that's the difference in your story to somebody else's and that's the point that we need to start talking about we're all called to be salt and light you know your the hope that you have in your life makes your story attractive to people regardless of where you're at and how inadequate you might feel right now. And I know that Holy Spirit is speaking to people, even this morning as I'm talking, reminding you of your story and your background. And for some of you, you've tried to squash that down and forget about it and try and pretend like it never even happened. But what if that very thing that God took you through is gonna be a place of healing for other people? And so in this series, Kororo Speak, we're encouraging every person in the church to begin to revisit their story again recognise that you do have a story and that you can speak from that place, that platform. It gives you a platform to speak from and to bring hope and life into people's worlds that don't have it. There's a a cool saying that says, uh, I didn't write this down, so hopefully I get it right, but there's a small small world, the stage, or, or the large stage, the world. And basically what that's saying is this little stage here is so tiny in comparison to the world that's represented by every single person that's sitting out here today, the influence that you have. And your world is massive. Your stage or your platform is massive. And so often we sell ourselves short and think we couldn't do this. We couldn't lead people to Jesus. We couldn't tell others about Him. I'm too shy. My life's a mess. I don't have that confidence. I can't really even speak. I don't know the Bible well enough. I haven't been to Bible college. I'm not an evangelist. I'm not a pastor. Let me tell you, you do have a voice. God's given you a voice and you have a story as well. And it's time for every single one of us to stand up on that story and begin to kororo or to speak from that platform. Would you stand with me, church? I'm gonna close in prayer this morning. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence that's here this morning in church. Lord, we we thank you for our life that has been so far. For some of us, Lord, that's a difficult thing to say when life has been so tough. But we choose to thank you in spite of what life has been because we now have hope. 
when Jesus entered our world. And I pray, Lord, for every person that's here this morning that, that you would challenge every single one of us to begin to recognise our story and the platform that you've given us to begin to speak again with confidence that Holy Spirit can give us. God, I thank you for Hannah and Ian, this amazing couple that have found their way to Hope Chapel. Lord, we thank you that there's so much more to them than, than what we might have seen or understood or recognised. God, we thank you for their journey and their boldness to share their faith with others. Lord, I pray that as they've shared their story and spoken from that place today, Lord, that you'd give them divine opportunity to speak to so many other people and that'll have an impact with hundreds of people as they begin to share their story about what Jesus has done and set them free in their world and their life. And Lord, we ask that throughout this week coming that you would give every single one of us an opportunity to court it all with people around us, to speak our story and to tell somebody about Jesus. Lord, I pray you'd give us the confidence to do that, that those people would have ears to hear. And Lord, that we might even begin to invite them to come to church where they can find hope and find you once more again. God, I speak blessing over every person. You know, just as I'm standing here, Holy Spirit speaking to me that some people have come into church this morning and you're almost, it's like you've almost been blindsided by this little message. It's not what you're expecting and all of a sudden you've been confronted by a whole lot of stuff. It's painful and hard to deal with and uh, so often in life we try and block our story out. And yet Jesus is speaking to you this morning about beginning to share your story and using it as a place to speak from. God, for every person that's hurting a little bit this morning, as we remember things in our life, God, I pray that you would be their strength and you would be their support. Holy Spirit, touch them now in Jesus' name. Just as Ian experienced that supernatural hug, the presence of God touching him when he was so far from you, Lord, I pray that every one of us this morning would experience that touch. Those that are dealing with something, Lord, I pray that you'd touch them. Just while every head's bowed and every eye closed, if you if you know that it's going to be a little bit difficult to revisit your story over the next few weeks and you need a touch from the Holy Spirit supernaturally this morning to empower you to do that, you're struggling with this this morning, if you could just lift your hand nice and high, I want to pray for you. Thank you, that's awesome. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. His hand's going up. Lord, where people are responding this morning, Lord, we speak healing in Jesus' name. Lord, we don't know the background, the backstory. Jesus, we don't know all the process that has been until this moment today but we trust you that you know and that you are our healer. And so, Lord, we speak healing into those stories in Jesus' name. Lord, healing into those past in Jesus' name. Lord, as they come up and come to the light, Lord, I pray that you'd speak words of affirmation, words of healing and reconciliation into people's stories where there's broken relationships and hurt. Lord, I pray that you'd mend that in Jesus' name so that we can all bring our story and begin to court it all from that place. Lord, ultimately we give you the glory and we thank you that every single story points to Jesus. No matter how crazy, diverse and unique our stories are to one another, Lord, they all point to you ultimately. And so we honour you in this place for saving us, for setting us free and for interjecting your life into our story. And God, for those who may be here today that don't know you yet and have not had you step into their story. Lord, I pray that you would reveal yourself to them in this moment now. And Lord, that they would respond with their heart, just like Ian did without even understanding, responding to his God, his Creator. God, I pray that people would do that this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us for this message. For more information about our church, head along to www.hopechapel.nz. See you next time.